Hello, this is Erica, and here are six cool games that you can play on Zoom. In today's video, we're going to look at six games as well as how to share your screen. In addition to that, some of the accessibility that is available in these games. The first game is Trivia. You can use a site called PollEverywhere.com. There are other sites out there as well that you can use, like Kahoot if you're working with younger people in the game space. But uh, if you do a Google search, you'll find different polling options online. But I chose to use PollEverywhere.com. Once you've created a free account on one of the poll services or one of the online game apps, then you can go to Google and look for question ideas. So I use so many different websites to create questions for my Google game. But yes, Google is your friend because a lot of people have questions and answers already out there and you can pretty much cut and paste them into your poll template. For example, 90s and 2000s trivia. What was the name of Ross and Rachel's child on the TV show Friends? They give you several choices. I'm going to pick Emma and let's see if Emma is correct. Of course, they let you clear your response if you're not sure. But yes, this is timed and let's see. Yes, that's correct. So I earned 688 points. And if you're using the game with voiceover, it is accessible. You have the choice of using it on the web or through the app. Show web, are you smarter than a fifth grader? 31 questions and main. What was the name of the last queen of France and main? You can respond once. Charlotte of Savoy with zero of your votes. Marie Antoinette with zero of your votes. Mary Tudor with zero of your votes. Claude of France with zero of your votes. Option four of four Claude of France. Button. And Mary Tudor, Marie Antoinette with zero of your votes. Option two, Marie Antoinette with your vote. Option two of four Marie Antoinette. Dimmed. Response recorded. Rail dots one, two, three, four, five, six. This poll is locked. That's correct. Zero points. 625 points. So as you will see on this particular platform, this is a timed game. So you can pick 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds, but whatever the case is, you can alter it as you create the questions. And it's actually pretty fun. I've done it a couple times on Zoom. So number one is trivia. And of course, you can share the link with everybody and they can play it on their own individual devices. So that's the best part. The second game is Five Second Guess. Five Second Guess is an app from the Apple App Store. I'm sure it's on the Play Store as well or something similar, but you can actually remove the ads from this, which is helpful because I've tried to play it with the ads and they pop up after every second or third game. So make sure that you uh, pay the $2 to remove the ads if you wanna play it legitimately with a group. With five second guess, you are given a category and there is a timer at the bottom. So although this can be played as a group, one person has to answer the category before the countdown ends. So yes, you as the person operating it or as a group, you all have to decide whether the answers are true or valid or not. And then you indicate whether they got it right or not. So it, that's pretty fun. It makes it competitive. And with this app, you would have to be the one to share your screen with the group on Zoom. So I'll put the instructions for that at the end of this video, of course. But yes, you are the one to share the screen. You're the one to manage who answers next, as well as whether they got the answer right or wrong. And for voiceover users, this game is accessible. White home, button, name three winter clothing items. Start. Button. Start. Four. Two. Time's up. Challenge successful? Nailed it. Button. Failed it. Button. The third game is Online Jeopardy. So if you visit JeopardyLabs.com, you can create your own custom Jeopardy game. For example, name that song R&B from the 80s. So I created this around 1980s artist and this one is basically like a name that tune 
So I put in sections of the lyrics from songs and then you have to guess what song it is. And as you see, you can split it into multiple teams. Here I just chose the default, which is three teams. With this game, you can share from your laptop or desktop screen, or you can share from your phone. And in this instance, I'm using the iPhone, but at the top, you, even if you're on a touch device, you can still operate the control. So as you see, there's a continue and there's also a space bar. So if you just tap escape, the word escape up there or the space bar, it will act like it would on a laptop. So that's cool. For iOS users using voiceover, this game is also accessible. 100. The capital city of Ireland. Spacebar. Spacebar. What is Dublin? Team 1. 0. Plus. Plus. ESC. 100. The fourth game is charades. So this is an easy one to play on Zoom. All you have to do is go on Google and Google some charades words. So here I just found some easy words like airplane and blank and hammer and book. So they would have to act out these words without talking. And a strategy that you can use to get the words to the individual is they would have to keep, so the person that's actually playing or acting out the words would have to keep their chat window open and you as the moderator of the game would send the word to them via chat privately. So they will see the words pop up as they act it out. So that's pretty simple and it's a free game and it's nothing you have to pay for or prepare heavily for either. So for blind users, a way to modify this game is by either putting the word or words in a chat on Zoom, or you can text the word directly to the player. That way they can pull it up on the notes app on iOS, or they can use their refreshable Braille device. That way they can keep up with the word list that they're supposed to act out. The fifth game is Pictionary. Pictionary is another fun game that can be played on Zoom. What you need to do is share your screen. And when you share your screen, you'll see the whiteboard option. I'll show you that in a second. And you can also use plain old paper. So it just depends on how high tech and involved you want to get your audience. And this is another game that you can actually Google the words for. So as you see, I chose some easy Pictionary words so you can have Words like eyeball or glasses, or they can draw high heels, books, etc. So to make this as simple as possible, all you have to do is give the person that is drawing a word via their chat privately, and they will draw the word. You'll have to, as the moderator, make sure to keep up with the time. But as you split up your teams, whoever guesses, the item that is drawn, of course, will get the points. So it's really simple. You don't have to go through a whole lot to make this a fun game. The sixth game is Taboo. So for Taboo, this is one that can be easily modified to fit Zoom. So for example, the word that the audience needs to figure out is the word spaghetti. The player cannot say the following words to give the audience hints. They have to say every word except tomato, meatballs, Italian noodles, and pasta. So this is another one where the word list can be sent to the blind or visually impaired player through chat on Zoom or through their text messages. That way they can keep up with the game and they'll know the word that they're supposed to say. And the person that's assigned to moderate them can do that through Zoom as well. So you can send them the list as well. We've taken a look at the six games that you can play on Zoom. So now let's look at how you can share your screen from a mobile device. For this particular example, I'm using an iPhone and a MacBook, but I'm sure the instructions are similar for other devices. So from the Zoom app on the iPhone, at the bottom you'll see share content. So across the bottom you'll see icons. There's a box with an arrow pointing up called share content. Tap on that first. 
Next, you'll see a screen pop up and it has several options. In this instance, I'm going to tap on screen. So I'm sharing my screen from my iPhone to the actual desktop or laptop. Then you'll be given several options of what to broadcast. In this instance, I'm broadcasting from the Zoom app. Then all you have to do is start broadcast and the broadcast will be shared on your actual Zoom app, which will also be shared with the group that's on your Zoom live. Now looking back on the laptop side, you will have to install a plugin but it only takes up to like 15 or 10 seconds to download, so that's not a big deal. And then after that, on your iPhone or iPad, you connect to the same Wi-Fi, you tap screen mirroring, and then you choose whatever Zoom that is uh, casting or you want to cast to, which in this instance was my Swarthy Daisy one. Now let's take a look at how to share your screen on a desktop or laptop. Using the Zoom app on a laptop, I'm using again a MacBook for this, but at the bottom you'll see several icons. There's one for share screen. If you click on share screen, you'll have options for sharing different parts of your computer screen that's open. So if you have a web browser open, a game open, etc., those are the things that will be choices for sharing. So the next screen you'll see is the basic choice screen. So you'll have options for the different screens that are open. Uh, you can share your desktop or you can share a whiteboard. You can share an iPhone or iPad via AirPlay or you can share the iPhone, iPad via cable. And as mentioned earlier, if you have a Chrome browser, etc., open, you can also share those things and they'll pop up as options. But at the very bottom of this menu panel, you'll see share computer sound. So if you want to play a video or have the sound from the game to uh, be audible for your listeners, you can click on that. And then you also have the option for optimize screen share for video clip. For even more control, if you choose the advanced sharing options, you'll see the menu that says how many participants can share at the same time. So as you see, it's one participant can share at a time is an option, or you can choose multiple participants can share simultaneously. So with that, you will need dual monitors and that's recommended for that feature. Next, you'll see who can actually share. So you can either have only the host, which would be you in this instance, or all participants can share. And then lastly, who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? Either only the host or all participants can be an option. And if you're playing Pictionary or a similar game that involves drawing, here is how you can share your whiteboard. And as was already shared to access the functions under the basic tab, you'll see whiteboard. Once you select whiteboard, then you'll be able to share your whiteboard screen from your device. In this instance, I am sharing my whiteboard from my laptop to all of the people on Zoom. So as you see, I have drawn something. I think it's like a tree in a house I was trying to draw. But whatever the case, that gives you an example of some of the settings as you see on the screen that you need. Most likely you'll just use the draw tool, but they do have some other options for adding different things into your drawing. And here you see me live drawing and this is being shared live with the Zoom audience. And I am not good at drawing at all. As you can see, I am trying my best. But yes, I am attempting to draw a tree with fruit on it and a house. So it's really fun, it's really interactive and this is something that you should try for sure. And in addition, because I'm using this on my laptop, I am using a trackpad to draw, but you can also use a mouse as well. Drawing on an iPhone and sharing with the group. In addition, if you are sharing from your iPhone, for example, and you want to draw from your iPhone to share with the group on Zoom, you will need to use an app such as the Notes app and you can use the draw feature as you see here on the screen. And of course, as you are casting your screen, everything that you'll draw will show up 
on the Zoom stream for everyone to see. So just to give you all a quick example of low vision settings that you can modify on Zoom as a user and a player is when you go under settings, you'll see accessibility. And under there, you'll see an option for closed captioning. You'll see font size, small to large. So to make adjustments for that, all you have to do is use the slider tool and you see it can go from small to large. And it also gives you an example of what subtitles will look like if you need closed captioning. Um, also, if you're a visually impaired user, of course, the font will be enlarged as well. The next section shows meeting controls. So you can always show meeting controls. You can check that box to make sure that you can control the meeting if you are the person moderating or conducting the game. And then the last section is for chat display size. So they have some shortcuts for that, but you can also go in and moderate the chat display so you can enlarge it to a text size that is comfortable for you. So all in all, there are several ways that you can use Zoom to play games. If you all have any additional ideas for games or for settings that we can use for accessibility, make sure to leave a comment below. Once again, this is Erica. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.